Okay, welcome to video number two of our pumped high of our um, energy storage lecture, lecture 23. Okay, so we're talking specifically about pumped hydro storage today. Um, it's a fairly basic concept. So we've got some elevation gain. And at the bottom, we have a convenient body of water, say a lake. At the top, we've built a reservoir whether we've actually for a lot of them in the east coast they just build a big dam around the top of a flat mountain or you can dig down or have a natural reservoir at the top of a mountain okay then what we do is we connect these bodies of water with some plumbing and then we have some sort of a pump turbine house Okay, so the point here is when electricity is heat is cheap, oops, so we pump water uphill when power is cheap and or abundant. Usually those go hand in hand. So if it's the middle of the day, we have our base power plants generating and we're almost about to go into over um, generation then we will start to take some of the power from those power plants run it to this pump and we turn this pump so that it moves water uphill increasing the capacity of water inside of our reservoir right now we sit and we wait we have stored a weight above ground we now have gravitational potential energy that we didn't have before and then as soon as power becomes either not cheap or not abundant then we run that water downhill we essentially open a valve right here and allow that water to flow back into our reservoir which it will do because it is higher up it's got this pressure pushing it down and into this reservoir. We run it downhill, but we're going to run it through a turbine, usually the same piece of material that we use to pump the water uphill. We allow it to run back through that turbine and turn it the opposite direction. And then it, the, the um, motor powering our pump now becomes a generator and it generates electricity and sends it back along the power lines to be used in the grid. So we run water downhill through a turbine when our power is either expensive or it is needed. If um, we now have a huge demand on the grid and we would need to otherwise turn on an inefficient peaking plant, we can instead run this water down the hill and capitalize on that energy. Okay, uh, this is great. It's a little tricky though because you need two very specific things in order for this energy storage method to work effectively. Number A, you need an abundant reservoir of water. And item B, you need a large drop in elevation the bigger the drop the greater the pressure your fluid will put across your turbine increasing your power output and you need that over a short distance right it doesn't if your elevation increases over 30 miles you don't really want to have to make a system 30 miles long you want a fairly steep mountain right next to a body of water and then also it helps to already have a reservoir at the top of a mountain. That isn't always easy to do. In fact, they're getting harder to find. But a recent um, kind of newer idea is to use old mines as the reservoir, since it's already a system of tunnels built into a mountain elevated above usually some valley. There's kind of a system almost ready to go. Okay, 
the modeling we're going to get into today is very, very basic. In fact, we're just going to talk about efficiencies. So as you pump this water up the hill, you do so at a loss, which we will call the pump efficiency. The pump efficiency tells us how much energy we actually store. So the energy stored compared to the amount of energy that we used to that we sent to the pump. This would be the electrical energy we sent to the pump. So this accounts for losses in the pump itself, losses in the um, piping system moving the water uphill. Um, all of these different losses gives us a total pumping efficiency, a kind of a storage efficiency. But that's not enough because then we have to translate that stored gravitational energy into electrical energy again through another process which means another efficiency which is the total amount of electricity we generate divided by the amount of energy that we stored where these would be the same value okay and so our round trip efficiency is the total efficiency of our system so that would be how much energy did you put in to be stored and then how much energy did you get out? Um, and so this would be this energy electricity or what you finally got out divided by the energy you put originally into the pump as electricity. As you can see, that's just equal to these two items multiplied together. So the pumping efficiency multiplied by the turbine efficiency. And you can use this to find the total amount of energy that you will eventually will get out of your system as a function of how much energy you initially wanted to store in your system. Okay. Um, a few things to consider is evaporation. If you have long-term storage, so if you want to pump that water up there and store it for a long period of time, then you have to think about that some of your water which is your energy stored is going to evaporate away and that's a problem okay just as a note the average efficiency of a system like this um, the worldwide average is 70 to 80 percent with the maximum we've seen of 87 percent reported um, and you say hey well hydropower plants are better than that what's going on well remember we have two processes we got to pump the water up there and then extract its energy for a standard hydropower plant you know a dammed river this whole process is completed by us for us by mother nature so we don't have to account for that efficiency but when we're doing the pumping we have to think about how much energy we use to do that okay Finally, let's talk about actual utilization. Honestly, this is a great idea. It's a little hard because we can only develop so much of it, right? There's only so many places where you have an abundant reservoir of water, a large drop in elevation, and some convenient way already established to store the water at the top. Okay, so in the United States of America, we currently, well, in 2017, we had 22.6 gigawatts of pumped hydro storage installed, which represented 97% of all storage capability, all grid storage capability. So, I mean, it is, as we saw initially, the best way to store energy and extract that energy. And so it is what we use almost exclusively. Uh, the real problem is 22.6 gigawatts is a lot of power, but nowhere close to how much we use, right? So that's 2% of our total generating capacity in this country. So if all the power plants were to turn on at once um, and we compared how much storage power we have, we would have 2% of the total generating capacity. If we really hope to have um, a system that uses a large amount of renewables, we need to drastically increase this number so that not only we can meet peaking loads, but also the loads at night when we have no solar power. OK, 
okay, in the world. Um, pumped hydro storage currently accounts for 95%. Oh dear. 95% of all energy storage in the world is pumped hydro. China currently has the most capacity at 32 gigawatts. Japan is next with 28.3 gigawatts, which unlike us is 9% of their total generation. So we have met 2% of our total generation in storage capability. Japan has met 9%, the country who has done the best to meet as much of their generation capability as possible with storage to store that energy is Switzerland, who currently has 32% of the total generating power of their power plants um, could be met with storage. So let's say they have 100 gigawatts of generating potential in their power plants. They then have 32 gigawatts of possible energy storage that they could extract at that rate. So a long ways to go, we're getting there. The real problem is we're gonna run out of spaces to do it before we meet the current demand. So we need a different way to store power. And that's where batteries come in. 